So let's go outside and see if we can get our hot water heater going and see if we can take an outdoor shower. And the cool place thing about here is something I've wanted to do my whole life is you can just shower outside naked because there's no people around. There's literally, we saw the ferry leave. There's only, I think, one other truck and camper out here on this whole island, and we haven't seen them in two days. I think they're on the far end. So you can just shower. Naked? The, yeah, when the beach is your background. Like, that's amazing. You want to shower naked in the wilderness? I do. <laughs> I want to pee wherever I want and shower naked in the wilderness. And uh, we're, we're getting there, so... Good morning and welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Chris. And last night was our first night living truck camper nomad life here on the beach. And uh, we really put it to the test because thunderstorms started rolling through at about 2 a.m. And uh, we'd never been in a truck camper in a thunderstorm and it is very noisy and it sounds like you're going to go meet your maker. Uh, things are moving around, but it was a success. Nothing leaked, nothing fell apart, nothing went wrong. No, we had um, the canvas windows rolled down, and so we had a lot of breeze coming through until the thunderstorm stopped. And then we learned that no CM gnats can fly through the, screen. the screens of <laughs> yeah. the windows, and we were mauled and accosted, and it was really miserable for about an hour until we got all those dead inside here. We were just slapping the, the roof. Uh, trying to kill as many as possible, and then we quickly sealed those back up. We do have AC. We could have kept everything zipped up and been running a generator on the AC, but um, we're out here on this island, and you can only get here by ferry, and we only have so much gasoline for our generator, so we're kind of uh, just limping it around with how, how often we turn the uh, AC power on, mostly when we're using the Starlink to upload a video like we did yesterday or edit charge. something, charge our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so today... Uh, we are going to try to do a catch and cook. We're here on the ocean. I think we're going to put the camper down and maybe drive around somewhere else here on this island and see if we can get in the surf and catch uh, something. Maybe I know Spanish mackerel are running or uh, whitefish or some people call them sea mullet. I know those are uh, in the area. Yep, so we have today and tomorrow to try to be successful with one catch and cook at least. And we're going to start off the day right with a very healthy, nourishing breakfast. We're going to start the day off with a bang. Uh, we don't have a coffee maker. I know most YouTube channels really like making coffee, uh, but we're gonna have a bang and uh, a donut stick. Donut stick <laughs> and uh, get this day started. So uh, join us, and we'll see if we can get in the surf and catch something. Mm. Well, we got our little pop-up camper broke down. We uh, choked down our donut sticks with our bang energy drink, and we drove down the beach a little bit to try to get on some fishing. I don't know why we moved down the beach. There was nobody where we were parked before. There's nobody here. There's literally nobody on the beach. It's just a different spot. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just a little bit of adventure. And what we have here, we're going to set up with is these like bluefish rigs, these pre pre-made uh, bluefish rigs. I've loved these things since I was a kid because they're so easy. Uh, it's steel cable so that like a toothy fish, like I think Spanish mackerel are in the area this time of year here on the coast. And it's just uh, you tie this part uh, to your main line and then you put your weight down here and then you have two hooks uh, floating here they have these little uh, styrofoam bobbers on them to keep them up off the bottom so they're kind of floating around and then you have two choices uh, so we can put our cut bait our finger mullet we have some squid and some shrimp uh, to use on here we really only have one surf rod and one freshwater rod that just happens to be a little bit thicker and longer so I think we're gonna try both one will definitely get farther out than the other but we'll at least have two poles out and then uh, two bluefish rigs, so four hooks out total. We're looking at, uh, I think, Spanish mackerel again, and I think um, whiting, or some people call them sea mullet. I've heard a bunch of different names. On the East Coast, when you go up and down, every five miles, they call the same fish something different. Um, so hopefully we can put something onto these hooks and then into our bellies. So let's get out here and see what we can do. Beans, you ready to go fishing? You like the fish? So this rod, um, I've had this thing for like 10 years, maybe more, 10, 12 years. I actually bought this rod 
uh, when I was in Okinawa and I used to use it fishing off the surf there. It's kind of a junky rod, uh, you know, it's a collapsible pole, but I've had this thing for years and it's almost more sentimental at this point that I, I hang on to this stupid thing. And it's also the only surf rod that we have, so. Got my squid bait on here uh, and we had to move the truck back a little bit. One thing with surf fishing is uh, I'm super paranoid about getting my truck washed out into the ocean. Uh, so I'm always watching the surf. There's a few things that terrify me on planet Earth. Getting my truck washed out into the ocean, mountain lions, and sharks. Uh, so now that we got the truck backed up, I'm going to whip this thing out into the surf and see if we can not catch a fish all day. So Chris has casted out his bait. I'm going to try a different bait. He's going with squid and I'm going to go with the shrimp. I've only done shore fishing one time and it was like a curated experience through an aquarium. So I don't know much about it. Okay, maybe I might not be using shrimp. This is literally a block of ice. Got one. I got two. And this is a shrimp stickle. Uh, hadn't been surf fishing. Hadn't been surf fishing in a long time. And uh, I'm having a really hard time telling the difference between bites and the ocean just rolling the weight around. So I feel like I feel like a little kid when I used to reel it in all the time for everything. Uh, so I'm right back to where I started. Let's, let's go. So we had no luck in the surf. Uh, really strong rip current, just kept pulling our baits. You know, we'd cast out and bring them right back to the shore. So that was on the ocean side of this island. We're currently on the sound side of this island and we're gonna try something different. Uh, we have a bag of chicken necks and we have this string here and we're gonna put some chicken necks and we also have some chicken legs on here, throw it out in the water and wait for a blue crab, hopefully. To just latch onto it. And then you just slowly pull the string back and we're gonna try to collect some blue crabs. Um, I've never had them like hand caught, but I've eaten them at different restaurants um, on the East Coast and they're delicious. So hopefully we can catch that. We're also gonna throw one of our smaller rods out uh, with a little bait and see if we can get on some, uh, maybe some redfish or something. Maybe we can catch a slot limit size redfish that we can eat, so. Try number two. Yeah, all right, let's try over here. Okay, I'll go a little farther. <laughs> If we don't catch a fish or a crab, at least we might catch salmonella. That's better. All right, now what do you attach the string to? You just hold it. What? You just hold it and wait. You gotta feel the crab kind of pulling a little. Oh, all right. All right, I'm fishing. This is it. I'm, I'm gonna set up mine now. All right, Chris has tied the crab line to a stick so that he doesn't have to stand there and just hold it. Beans is cooling yourself off right by the bait, so that'll probably work really well. And this is the setup for this side. A little bobber with a circle hook and a shrimp. So this is a little apropos for this side versus the shore fishing on the other side. So I feel a bunch of little jerks. Um, hopefully there's a crab on here. Maybe it's a little teeny tiny one, I don't know, but really be nice to uh, catch something today. This anticipation is killing me. 
very exciting. You can tell how big it is by how daintily I am holding the string. The string. And it let go. Mother All right, so I think we got our first crab here. I'm at battle with right now. Let's see if it's a blue crab. Oh, it is a blue crab. I think it's a little Oh, there's, there's another one. I think it's a little small, but at least what we're doing is uh, working, which is always exciting. So how do you get it from here? You just have to trick them to keep wanting to hold on to the bait until you can get your hand on them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, if you do that, they'll uh, run off. Okay. Probably, we probably need a net. It'd probably be good to have a net for this. So Elizabeth caught our first blue crab. This is our first catch of the day, period. Way too small, but uh, something. So we're on the board. So we scavenged this net. We found this thing tied up and I tied it back together with some fishing line. And we're gonna try this version of a blue crab net uh, because our current version, the crabs don't wanna hold on long enough until we can get them up on the sand and grab them because I forgot a dip net. So we scavenged and found this old junk net uh, tied up to a piece of wood over there. So we're gonna try to make this work and catch something a little bigger than this. This uh, blue crab, the size limit, from the tip to the tip, they need to be like, they need to be five inches. And this is not five inches. My finger is three inches. It's a little small. I wish that was five inches, but maybe in a different reality that would be five inches, but not today, so. Okay, he's going back. Whee! Alright, so our, our catch is getting a little bit bigger, but still not big enough to eat. Uh, so I'm going to let this little guy go, but at least we're catching something. We've been out here for a few hours now, and I'm getting nibbles. We're running low on bait, and I'm getting nibbles. So, fingers crossed, something happens. It's uh, starting to get dark, and it's raining off and on. So, uh, one fish will be really nice. I am extremely cold. It's been raining uh, since last night. It rained all last night. And we got a little break where it didn't rain on us for a couple hours in the middle of the day, but uh, hands are all pruned up. Uh, we've caught nothing big enough to keep and eat, crab or fish, and we've fished all day. We're gonna run out of bait. Uh, so hell marrying it here up until the very end. We're probably just gonna have uh, cut up hot dogs with scissors and, uh, and noodles for dinner tonight. It doesn't look like we're going to be having a fish dinner. Rock bottoming! You're rock bottoming! I am. We're rock bottoming now. <laughs> we decided so strong. I've been fishing all day. Uh, just caught nothing but horse fly, horse fly bites and uh, gnat bites. And caught zero fish. Would you like to be warm in the truck with me? Okay. Go ahead. Be warm in the truck. Are you cold too, Beanies? <laughs> it's hard when you don't have fine motor skills. Well, you can't reach it from there. You gotta go down here. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. <laughs> we gotta figure it out. Oh, you're a smart girl. Good girl, girl. gotta turn around. You're a smart girl. Whoops. There we go. Alright, so it is day two, and we are gonna try our blue crabbing capturing again today. So today was pretty um, cold and miserable. As you can see here, it's very overcast. 
We came, I guess, at a time when for about a week it's just expected, expected thunderstorms throughout the whole week. I think we're on the tail end of a tropical depression or something. Um, but we caught zero fish, so that's the good news. Actually, that's the bad news. Rock bottom, you're rock bottom. I am. Chris caught crabs. Caught crabs. Uh, we caught nothing of eating size or nothing worth keeping, whether in the ocean or in the sound behind us with blue crabs or with surf fishing. So now I guess we're just going to fire up our hot water tank. We've never taken a shower in our RV, our house. Yeah. So we're going to fire up our propane hot water system and make sure that works and see if we can have a little trickle of a hot water shower. And then we're going to cook our bait. We had crab bait, uh, which is chicken legs that you tie on a rope and throw out and we couldn't get any decent keep in size crap so we're just going to cook our chicken drums our chicken <laughs> legs and eat them ourselves for dinner as I'm our okay with that as our consolation dinner Bang. what are you doing all right so for our hot water heater um we're still getting how to use this we have to turn the water on which is here and there's an electric pump uh, that will run off DC or uh, AC to uh, get our water pressure going. Good buzz. It's a it's a tanked wa hot water system, and it has to be full of water before you can turn it on. Learned that uh, the hard way when I first started this thing. Um, then you just click on the hot water heater, and when that light goes off, that means the pilot light's lit and it's good to go. If that light keeps blinking, that means the pilot light's still turned to light, and you have a propane problem. Well, it came back on. We might have a propane problem, or, or it's because um, it's very windy here, and it might, it might keep blowing that out until it gets going. So, hopefully, it's good. Looks like it's good now, but it's very windy right now. It's like, I don't know, 20 knot winds right now. Um, so it's hard to get a fire going. It's hard to light a grill on the propane, and hard to light our propane hot water heater. So let's go outside and see if we can get our hot water heater going, and see if we can take an outdoor shower. And the cool place thing about here is something I've wanted to do my whole life is you can just shower outside naked because there's no people around. There's literally, we saw the ferry leave. There's only, I think, one other truck and camper out here on this whole island, and we haven't seen them in two days. I think they're on the far end. So you can just shower. Naked? The, yeah, when the beach is your background. Like, that's amazing. You want to shower naked in the wilderness? I do. <laughs> I want to pee wherever I want and shower naked in the wilderness. And uh, we're, we're getting there. So let's go and see if our, uh, our hot water system's working outside. So you can hear in here, you can hear the fire burning and you can feel the propane exhaust coming out here from the hot water heater. And the other thing that I think you're supposed to do is to make sure that the hot water heater is full is just purge a little water out. Yep. And our hot water heater is full of water and working, which is awesome. Now this is our outdoor shower location and we take our shower handle from outside and bring it our shower handle from inside and bring it outside and hook up right here. So I'm gonna push the line through. Whoa. Are you getting um, are you getting naked right now? Nicole? Not right now. Okay. Only for the Patreon subscribers. <laughs> and there's our shower. Ooh, it's warm. Is it already? Whoa. probably fall asleep watching Spongebob reruns on the iPad so that's that'll kind of negate it but. so we've actually never used this before uh, everything we're doing is new to us and I think it's gonna be hard to like because it's very windy but we'll see nope it was actually very easy to like I was wrong I eat my own words and uh, that was very easy to like so fire number one, fire number two is our propane hot water heater, which is right now really making our hot water nice and uh, getting Toasty. ready for uh, the most excited shower I've had in a long time where I'm going to have a cold yingling 
and shower out in the middle of nature uh, like a boss. <laughs> and then fire number three is the campfire. Is the campfire. So we have all the fires going right now, and I just feel very free and very, very masculine right now. I just want to sprint or pick up something heavy. So, <laughs> all right, let's get this cooking and have some dinner. All right, this is our uh, would-be crab bait if we were successful with that, but we're going to eat them instead. I think it's hilarious that I'm doing this cooking segment because I uh, notoriously serve Chris things that are either burnt or raw. So maybe I'll just do the dry rub portion and he can be in charge of the grill because that's a man thing to do. Very basic spices here, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and smoked paprika. We like the smoked one over normal paprika. Oh, oh God. This wind makes it, maybe if I angle it. Use the wind to help you, that's what they say. Okay. Oh God, I all missed it. Um, they say white people don't add seasoning to stuff, okay? Have they heard about paprika? I think not. Paprika's the shiznit. So the nice thing about disposables like paper is that you can burn it. So add it to the campfire that's already going in your campsite and I don't have to do any dishes. Paper is also a renewable resource so all in all very beneficial. One of the other reasons why we eat like trash whenever we're doing some of our adventures is because when you're handling things like raw meat and raw chicken it's really gross and there's not really a convenient way to wash your hands and wash all the stuff you're using to prepare that unless you have a truck camper with an outdoor shower. I did not have to touch anything. I didn't have to go inside. Ooh, it's warm. Chris already put the soap out here, knowing that this was going to happen. And now we have no risk of salmonella. That is really warm. That feels nice. Smell good. Not only are we having chicken cooked all the way instead of uh, something canned or already pre-cooked, we're also having name brand mac and cheese. It's getting real high class here, folks. Really high class. Honest to God, the best instant mac and cheese is the stuff that has the liquid goop already ready to go. Fight me on it. It's a hill I'm dying on. Liquid go for your home. So we got our crab bait and our liquid gold, well, off-brand liquid gold, off-brand. No, 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 this is Velveeta. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's actually very exciting. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I've had the name brand anything. <laughs> we got our crab bait. Can you not refer to this as crab bait? It's chicken drumsticks, okay? Normal drumsticks that people eat. It's not, delicious. Not crab bait. But it technically is crab bait. All right, so oh. that's really good. Uh -huh. We didn't catch anything to keep but we did get to eat our bait and our pasta and cheese sauce i'm gonna take a quick shower i think she's probably gonna keep pounding on this chicken bait absolutely we're gonna have a few beers and then probably see you guys next time the I'm, yeah yeah guessing in the mountains somewhere a little cooler a little less sand and see what we can get into there so success with the truck camper it's first outing success with the truck it's first outing as well so, I mean, win, win, win all across the board aside from the rock bottom fishing, which is to be expected on yeah. our channel anyway. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. It's your time. Uh, you feel the cute baby, you know it. Oh.
cream Get on top Cream You will cut Cream Don't you stop Cream Shuffle get back You're so good Baby, think nobody better